Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Beginning your life as a newly minted adult by moving away from home and into a college dorm can be very exciting, as well as a little intimidating. But it makes it all the more difficult when ghosts just won't leave you alone in your dorm. Those are the stories we'll be dealing with tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you like tonight's video, give it a thumbs up and comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together, together. This happened to me back in 2012, at the beginning of my sophomore year in college. I moved into a dorm that had the reputation for being creepy. People said it gave them bad vibes. I've been tormented by the supernatural throughout my life, so that was the last thing I needed on top of my usual college pressures. Even before I ever stepped foot inside that building, I remember walking up to it on move-in day with all of my belongings and seeing a grayish-blue aura surrounding it. I was already thinking, great, what now? But I calmed myself down and finished moving in. The RA gathered everyone around for introductions. We were all crowded inside one of the common living areas, and another student, he was from Trinidad, Tobago, locked eyes with me. And when he did, the room became very warm and the lights began flickering. The RA decided to move everyone down to the first floor common area, as it was much more spacious and had air conditioning. This Trinidadian student and I, though, stayed behind. We continued staring at each other. We could sense that we had a common bond, that we were both able to tap in to the spirit world. He looked at me and said, Are you? And I told him yes, I had experiences with the supernatural. He said he had too and he told me that he had visions. Then, completely out of the blue, my aunt called me on my phone to ask if I was okay. I said, yes, why? Well, apparently, she had been taking a nap and had a dream about me and a Trinidadian student meeting. My aunt has very strong psychic gifts, and I told her that it was so weird because there was such a student, and he happened to be in the room with me at that very moment. I also told her that the room had gotten very warm and the lights began flickering when we met. She asked to be put on speakerphone so she could speak to him as well. My aunt explained that since we're both gifted and we've had many encounters with the supernatural, we're both inadvertently acting like magnets for the spirit world. She said that strange occurrences would begin happening a lot more frequently the longer we hung around each other, because we were amplifying each other's energies. Basically, we were luring spirits to us. But she said we didn't need to avoid each other indefinitely, but it would be a good idea to distance ourselves until she was able to gather the materials and mail them to me so that she could walk us through a warding off ritual. This ritual would allow us to be around one another, relatively undisturbed by the spirit world. And she thought that ultimately, we would be more protected if we stuck together. After all, there is strength in numbers. So within three days, I received a large box in the mail for my aunt. I took it up to my room, and I had the Trinidadian student come over. We took the supplies out of the box, and when we did, the air in the room got very heavy and the lights began to flicker. I called my aunt and put her on the speakerphone so she could instruct us on how to perform this ritual. There were some exotic things in that box, let me tell you. There were animal claws, various oils and herbs that I had never heard of before, red and white candles, and a vial of purple liquid that my aunt told us that we had to place teardrops in. But not just any teardrops, mind you. We needed one from a happy memory and one from a sad memory. So we began talking about our saddest and happiest memories. And eventually, we were able to gather those tears and put them in the vial. And when we did, the purple liquid turned clear. 
Now at this point in my life, I have had so many disturbing paranormal things happen to me that I don't even question my aunt's authority. I totally believe in her rituals. Then my aunt had us each recite a prayer in our native languages while she chanted something in a European language. Just to clarify, my aunt is white, but she's mastered various languages and rituals from other cultures as she likes to have as many tools to aid against the supernatural as possible. And she tries to tailor the rituals to a person's personal background, native language, ethnicity, and culture. As we performed the ritual, the room became very windy, even though we didn't have any windows open and the AC wasn't on. All I could hear was the sound of my aunt's voice chanting. And then she told us to focus on how much we wanted to remain safe and shielded from evil spirits and negative forces. She told us to visualize an invisible barrier around us that could be extended as far as we willed it. We both did that. And after a few minutes, everything calmed down. The air was normal again, the lights stopped flickering, and the energy around us felt light again. The warding ritual was complete. After the ritual, we started hanging around together a lot, and we became good friends, and nothing strange happened at first. But here's the kicker. The basement of our dorm was haunted. Apparently, years ago, a student hung himself in the basement laundry room. The laundry room. Of course, it had to be the one place that we needed to go and couldn't be avoided. So one night, after avoiding it for the first two weeks of school, I finally had to do laundry. Remembering that there is strength in numbers, I asked my Trinidadian friend to accompany me to the laundry room because I was afraid to go alone. He was a little hesitant, but came along anyway. Inside the laundry room, there was a locked door that led to a storage room. It was used to store students' bikes and other belongings. We were both doing our laundry when my friend paused and looked up at the ceiling, as if in a trance. Well, I was just a little bit spooked by that. He then snapped out of it and told me that he had just had a vision. He looked over at the door that led to the storage room and just stared at it. I looked over too and we both saw a shadow moving around behind the glass window pane on the door. My friend said it was the spirit of the student who hung himself years ago. We both heard a loud bang in the storage room and froze. Then the door began slowly opening and we both just ran out of there up to our rooms leaving our laundry behind. The next morning, we both went down together to get our laundry, and the door to the storage room was wide open. Even though we were afraid, we were also very curious, so we went in to inspect. As we entered the room, we saw that a few of the bikes had been strewn about the floor, and right there, on the pane of glass in the window, was a barely visible handprint. We were both at a loss for words. And then the air became very still and we both heard what sounded like a male crying in the corner. I don't know about my friend, but I felt an overwhelming sad energy and then it quickly went away. My friend asked me if I wanted to try to communicate with the spirit and help it move on, but I just wasn't up for it. I did tell my aunt about it later and she advised me to leave it alone. One day after class, I was looking for my friend and he was nowhere to be found. So I went to my room to study. Then I got a knock on the door. It was my Trinidadian friend and he came to inform me that he had just come from the storage room. He was helping the spirit of the boy to find peace and move on to the other side. After that, we could do laundry without fear anymore. I just graduated from college and I was an RA on our freshman residence hall for three years. 
My first two years, I lived on the sixth floor, but in my final year, they moved me down to the fifth floor. Now, the dorms are really nice. They're in a very new building, and the RAs are essentially given a decent-sized studio apartment to themselves. Having been at the school for years, and the building being new, I pretty much knew all of the RAs who had lived in that room before me. And on occasion, I would hear from them that the room was haunted. It was never very intense, but weird things would happen, like knocks on the door late at night. The RA would get up and open the door, but no one would be there. I now think this may have been the spirit using the tried and true sneaky method of gaining permission from each new RA to enter that room. If it knocked on the door and the RA opened it, that was essentially granting it permission to enter the room. Also, items would disappear, then reappear in different spots, and the bathroom door would lock by itself, and sometimes, cabinets would open and close all on their own. It didn't start off for me right away, but once I settled in, all of this started happening very frequently. My friends and I would start to see what looked like living shadows manifesting briefly. It wasn't fun dealing with this on top of an already stressful senior year. College, COVID, and now a ghost. This was an art school, so we had a lot of students with depression and anxiety. There had been quite a few suicide attempts, and after asking around, I discovered that all of the suicide attempts over the years had happened on the fifth floor. One of the freshmen who lived on my floor, Alex, ended up dropping out just a few months into the school year. She was having a lot of problems with her roommates. One of the things they complained about the most was that she insisted on using a Ouija board, but only on their side of the room, not hers. I later found out from others that this was the third time in a row in three years' time that this exact same situation had happened with other students in that same room. Every year, a girl named Alex would move into that room, and each one insisted on using a Ouija board on her roommate's side of the room. And each year, that girl named Alex would drop out of school just months into the school year. That coincidence still seems creepy to me. Once word of the haunting got around, the freshmen started referring to it as the Uptown Ghost. Our dormitory's name was Uptown. Other RAs who used to be skeptics began dreading doing the nightly rounds because they would hear footsteps right behind them, lights would turn on and off on their own, and they would hear whispers coming from empty rooms. Because it's an art school, it was just a matter of time before one of the students actually drew the thing and hung it up in the hallway. One night, during a late night duty round, I was already spooked. So when I saw that drawing hanging in the hallway, I started crying for no reason, and I grabbed the drawing and threw it in the trash. The scariest part, though, was that the drawing matched what my friend described that she had seen months earlier, and I hadn't shared it with anyone. It was a tall, skinny shadow with an unhinged jaw and freakishly long arms that dragged on the ground. Eventually, I reached out to another friend that I had, I knew she had very strong religious beliefs, and her parents turned out to be my saving grace. They don't refer to themselves as such, but essentially I equate them to Ed and Lorraine Warren. Her mom claims to be able to see spirits, and her father says that he can hear the word of God. The experience of them cleansing my room for me is something that I will never forget. They said that there was a spiritual residue in my room from years of activity, and mostly it was collected near the ceiling. After they cleansed my room, they taught me what I needed to know to give me the power to banish that spirit from my presence in the future, and they showed me how to defend my living space and claim it as my own. This was put to the test when the second semester rolled around. Everyone else continued to experience supernatural things, but I never did again. I graduated, and the new RA who lives in that room now 
still sends me text messages. She says that after I moved out, the spirit moved right back in, and she's experiencing everything that I did when I first moved into that room. Overall, I do blame myself a bit for giving it so much attention and therefore power while I was living there. But I also think it was much more active in my presence due to my strong religious beliefs. I still don't know exactly what it was or how it got into such a new building, but it feels good to know that in the end, I overcame it. This happened to me three years ago. One of the boys in our college dorm committed suicide because of the extreme pressure to do well in his studies. Some of the boys in our dorm reported seeing his spirit standing outside their room. At first, my friends and I thought they were just made up stories, but we couldn't have been more wrong. Seven months after the boy died, we were in my room celebrating my roommate's birthday and ran out of water. My friend and I went to get some more water, and as we were heading back to our room, we heard a voice behind us say, Hey guys, why didn't you invite me? We knew that voice. We both spun around to see the boy who had committed suicide seven months earlier, standing right behind us in the hallway. He had the most horrifying look about him. His eyeballs looked ready to pop out, and his neck was swollen up like a balloon. We took off running at top speed. Those 25 meters to our room seemed more like 25 kilometers. When we finally reached the room, we were panting and terrified. Everyone got scared when they saw us and they asked us what was wrong, but we couldn't speak. My friend even fainted. After a few minutes, I was able to speak and I told them everything. A few of them went back to the place where we encountered the ghost, but of course, they found nothing. I was really afraid that night, but later, I started missing the boy who died, and I felt really bad for him. After that, we always put a piece of birthday cake in front of his room, every time one of us had a birthday. It was nice to see that in the end, all of the people involved in these stories learned how to deal with the spirits in their own way, and they made it through to graduate and go on to enter the world of adulthood. And living in this world as a responsible adult is even scarier than dealing with ghosts, so they had good training. What's the scariest thing that you've ever encountered in life? Supernatural or real world? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to thank you all for listening tonight. I really do enjoy bringing you these stories every week, so I'm glad that I'm not sitting here reading out loud to no one. So thank you for stopping by. Now, until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>